And we decided that there are three, and we think pretty universal concept. One is about interest compounding. The other one is knowledge of inflation. And it's because almost every financial decision implies transferring resources over time. And the third, we uh, saw that was very important to talk about risk and risk diversification and understanding of people of risk diversification. We are not testing whether people can price bonds or we are not testing whether people are sophisticated investors. We are testing, do you know the ABC um, mm -hmm. of uh, the basic concept and which we believe are, are really important for making financial decisions. If there are the ABCs, so do we, should we expect most Americans know the correct answers to those three questions? This was our expectation, I have to say. And instead, what we found, and to me, this was the most um, interesting and potentially surprising result of our work, is just how little people know, given that, first of all, the US is the country with the most advanced financial markets, and also where we are asked to make, make, it, make many decisions. You know, In fact, today, if you're a young person, you need to, in a sense, start your economic life in debt if you go to college and take on student loan and there are so many decisions from saving for retirement deciding what to do of your 401k you know your mortgage and so on so you know our financial decisions are so complex yet you know as we found in in our work originally and continuously unfortunately over time People have very little knowledge, you know, the financial literacy that, you know, we, we have as, you know, average people is really, really low. How do Americans compare to other countries and how do Americans compare with the last generation of Americans? Um, in other countries which are similar to the U.S. In other words, you know, even if you look at countries, you know, developed country, G7 uh, countries, you know, countries where people are making a lot of these financial decisions, you know, we don't see high level of financial literacy. I think, you know, if I had to give a grade, um, you know, because we are making an assessment, I think most countries get an F. What we have seen, because now we have data from 2009 to 2021, even though this is not a panel data set, we could at least see in the population how financial literacy has changed. And what we see is that there is no improvement, and if any, we see a decline in financial literacy. It's hard to understand fully this decline because I think it also has to do with the composition of the population, right? The population is changing. Imagine that if we are getting more unequal, then in a sense, and we know that people who are, you know, lower income and lower education tend to be lower financial literate. You know, we also see that people, for example, which are minority like Hispanics and so on have lower financial literacy. So, you know, that could be part of, uh, of that, uh, of what's happening or potentially that decline in financial literacy. Now the world is becoming, the financial world is becoming more and more complex and we are facing all sorts of complicated decisions that we must make that have long-term implications for our life. Um, and, but at the same time, we also have better uh, technologies over time, right? So now if you invest in stock market, you can have an app on your phone, you can look at your stock market investment every minute. Um, and then you, if people may also say, I don't really need the financial knowledge, I can just go talk with my wealth advisors. So what about those technologies? Why is it still so hard for us? That's a great question. First of all, I always say, you know, technology is not a substitute for knowledge. Uh, and in fact, actually, our result shows that often people who use technology only, but they don't have financial literacy, they tend to do even worse. And I think it's because sometimes technology makes things very easy. Uh, but, you know, you have to know what you're doing. And if with the push of a button, you can buy a financial instrument or you can transfer money, it's really important for you to do well. A financial advisor is not a substitute for knowledge. You need to make sure that the advisor is really working best for you. And one of the reasons why football players have declared bankruptcy in the past is because they have been relying on financial advisor. 
But because the financial advisor realized very quickly that these people were quite naive and quite uh, financially illiterate when it came to management their, managing their money, they took advantage of them. You know, with the shift to defined contribution pension, now we will have access potentially to our pension wealth in a more liquid way, contrary to the past where defined benefit were managed by the firm and the firm was in charge of paying your pension. Now, first of all, you are in charge of managing your wealth and at retirement, you can almost cash in your wealth, your wealth in a lump sum. So we have overall access, you know, much more to wealth than in the past. And, you know, with a low level of financial literacy, you know, we can be more subject to scams. Mm -hmm. We see that, you know, all, all, many age group can be subject to that. But I think my research gives some warnings about the susceptibility of uh, the elderly or the older people to financial literacy, because one of the things we see and we see quite often is that the older population, first of all, they are more likely to have wealth because they are at the accumulation phase of the life cycle. We see that they have low financial literacy overall, but unfortunately they think they know. And so there is a highest mismatch in that, uh, that older age group between, between what people think they know and what they actually know. So, you know, I think I know, and uh, that might be the approach of these people. And unfortunately that mismatch can be pretty bad when it comes to, to scams, which are often very sophisticated and, and unfortunately, mistake la later in life can really be costly because you don't have a lot of time to recover from them. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about financial education in school? Like um, I, I heard in the last 10 years, there has been more and more uh, advocates for um, we, we got to have to have better financial education, maybe even starting in high school or middle school or even earlier. So what's happening in the U.S. and certainly accelerated by this crisis has been that many states are now making uh, financial literacy mandatory in high school. Having said so, I think, you know, we are not even at half uh, of the state. You know? And I feel that the students who do not have it are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And the students who do not have it are unfortunately the more disadvantaged student, the student mm -hmm. that come from family, low education and low income families, and therefore, you know, that they won't be able to learn it at the dinner table necessarily. And right. so, you know, school might be for them the great opportunity to learn it. And so my suggestions, you know, to everyone and to a parents is uh, to really expose young people to, you know, some financial education, you know, it can be as simple as uh, giving them a piggy bank or or, you know, really having them deal with money. And, you know, young people are very interested in money and they realize pretty quickly and interestingly that money is very useful to achieve objectives, mm -hmm. which is, I think, the purpose of money. I always say money allows you to achieve your dream so you are better do a good use of it. Oh, I see. Um, so I noticed in your survey questions, um, there's one choice called, I don't know. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that choice and then what it means when people chose, I don't know. Women are less likely in a sense to respond correctly mm -hmm. if they think they do not know, which is by the way, what I find in my classroom as well. In other words, I ask a question, I look around and the people who raise their hands are normally the male students. Mm. What do I do? Then when I go and poke and, and try to uh, nudge women to answer the question, they actually know the answer, mm -hmm. but they were not confident in their answer. And right. so we ran indeed this experiment in one of our study. We took away the do not know option and enforced people to answer the question. And what we found is that the gender gap diminishes. It doesn't go away, so I cannot argue we have explained the gender difference just with confidence, but we found that confidence uh, explained about one third of the gender gap in financial literacy. So in other words, what we do see is that women are less confident in this topic. And the problem is this has a fact of behavior. In the same way they are hesitant about their knowledge, then they might be hesitant 
in, for example, investing alone in the stock market or, you know, managing their wealth or making important financial decision. And this is also what our uh, research shows that this lack of knowledge and confidence, so both contribute to, for example, women being less likely to invest in the stock market. I know you uh, uh, come from Italy. So could you just maybe tell us a little bit about you coming to the US as an immigrant, as a woman, as an economist, um, and how did you navigate life? How did you become so successful in economics? <laughs> Well, that's a very difficult question. Um, I do feel, I have to say that, you know, being a woman, being from a foreign country, having a strong accent, you know, being in a field like economics made things difficult. Um, you know, it's not easy uh, to to be one of the few uh, women in the in the room. Uh, you know, it's not difficult. It's not easy to, you know, even get tenure when you uh, start and live in an environment that is not the same. So, for example, I started my academic life at Dartmouth College and it was a wonderful place and I, I really love it. Um, but, you know, it was very different than, for example, living in Italy or living in Milan, that you have to, you know, be willing to close the eyes in front of difficulties and be persistent, have grit um, and, uh, you know, have confidence in yourselves. Uh, so that's one suggestion I would continue give to kind of women and finding yourself the strength to, you know, get let your fear go and and uh, and take some of the risk because they are important. Um, and you know, be humble and always be willing to learn uh, and not be afraid to fail. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Anna. This is great. No, thank you. Thank you. Great conversation. Very much enjoyed talking to you.